Hello photographers, today we're going to talk about using Lightroom to organize your photos on an iPad. So when you open up Lightroom, you're presented with this sort of default view and over on the left you have your library. Now there's like this little home button here that just shows you kind of this home screen of Lightroom. I never use this. Now there's another tab up top, which is the sharing tab. I spend almost all of my time in the library tab because this is where you organize and edit your photos. So at the very top, you have your all photos, which is quite literally where you see all of your photos together. These are all separated and organized within the file system of Lightroom, but this is just all of them shown to you in one place. Down below that, we have photos that you've taken with the Lightroom camera. And then we have recently added, this shows you your most recently added photos. And it actually shows you the date and it has this little disclosure triangle over here so you can open up and see all of the photos that were imported at that particular time. And then we have people. Now, I don't spend hardly any time in this people tab. In fact, I spend zero time in this people tab. So let's get to the meat of this, which is the folders and then within the folders, the albums that actually hold your photos. This is a little bit deceptive because these folders aren't really folders on a hard drive. In fact, if we go to Lightroom Classic on my computer and we pick one of these photos here and I right click and I choose show in finder, you'll see that it is just stored in a folder system that Lightroom creates. So it has this container file here called mobile downloads and then it has SHP studio because that's the machine that these photos were imported into and then the files are in there. Now back here in Lightroom on the iPad, if you want to actually start organizing the photos, you have to create albums and or folders and then move the photos around to those areas. So let's start by doing that. First of all, we're going to go back out to the main library module area and you can see there's a plus button right up here. And if you tap that, you have the option to create a new album or a new folder. A folder holds albums and album holds photos. I have my folders by year. And if I go into a year, you can see a series of albums in there. So as an example, let's just create a new folder and we will call this folder 2019 test. And then I'm going to hit OK. And now I have this brand new folder that is empty. And as you can see, it's prompting me to create an album inside of there. Alternatively, out here, I can choose to create an album and call the album whatever I want. I'm going to call this test album. Now, this album is outside of the folder. You can move albums inside of folders. All you have to do is tap the three dot menu here and choose move to, and then you can choose the folder. I'm going to put it into the 2019 test and then tap move and I commit that move. And now you can see in my 2019 test folder is the test album. Now, how do you move pictures into albums. When you import files into Lightroom on the iPad, they just go into all photos, which we looked at earlier up here. So let's say I wanna take these five photos that I took of myself and I wanna put them into that album. What you have to do is select the photos. You can't drag and drop the photos into albums. It just doesn't work that way. It would be nice if it did, but it doesn't. So what you have to do is first select the photos and then you can move them into the album. To select a single photo or a group of photos, touch and hold a photo until this happens. This is the selection mode. And once you're in the selection mode, you can tap to select any photos that you want, or you can also drag your finger across photos to select them. Regardless, once you have the photos that you want selected, you can move them around. You actually have several options down at the bottom. You can choose add to, which adds them to an album. You can choose share, which we're not gonna talk about in this video, and you can delete. Be careful with delete because if you delete the photos from the iPad, it deletes them everywhere. It deletes them in the cloud, it deletes them in Lightroom CC on your desktop, it deletes them in Lightroom Classic on your desktop if you're syncing there as well. So I'm going to choose add to and I'm going to go into my 2019 test and choose the test album and then you tap add and now it looks like nothing's changed here because these photos are still in all photos but if we go into 2019 test my test album now has 19 photos in it. But what happened here? Well, I have all of these photos of Cecilia that I added here, but I just wanted these five photos of me. So I wanna get these photos out of this album. How do you do that? 
All you have to do is touch and hold, select the photos that you want to delete, and choose that remove option. Notice how it says remove instead of delete. It says remove because I am inside of an album. And the default option is to remove the photos from the album. If I tap remove, you can see it actually gives me two options here. Remove from album or permanently delete. Make note, it says permanently delete and it means it because as I mentioned earlier, it will permanently delete them from every instance. It will permanently delete them from the iPad. If you're using Adobe's cloud system, it will delete them from the cloud and it will delete them from any desktop versions of Lightroom that you have it synced to as well. I'm going to choose remove from album and it tells you they won't be deleted, they'll still be in all photos. I remove them and now I have my photos organized into this album. Real quick, I just want to take a second here to let you know that this video has been brought to you by me. I put a lot of time and effort into these videos, and if you could support that in any way, it would be greatly appreciated. One of the ways that you could support it would be checking out some of my merch, which you can find in the merch bar down below or at this link right here. So that's the methodology of organizing. Now let's talk a little bit about the storage and the synchronization with Adobe's Cloud system. If you tap the three dots in the upper right hand corner, you can choose the setting options. And there's two things we're concerned with here. The first is cloud storage and sync. And what this tells you first of all is how much cloud space you have and how much of that you are using. Now there are two options here as well. Number one here is only download smart previews. And this is what you want to do if you want to preserve the hard disk space on your iPad. Because what this means is by default, the full size raw files will be available up in Adobe's cloud system and on the iPad by default you will have smart previews which are lower resolution raw files and you can do all of your normal Lightroom editing on those raw files and if you're connected to a network, be it over Wi-Fi or over cellular, whenever you need the full resolution file, it will request that file from the cloud and pull it down. But you might be thinking, well, what if I'm gonna be in a place where there's no internet and I want the full size raw files? Well, there's an easy solution for that. You do have to plan ahead, but all you have to do is go to an album and tap the three dots on the album. And one of the options here is to store locally. And if you turn that on, then it will store those raw files locally on your iPad. You can see here, it's telling me this right now. So let's go back and we'll look at the last option inside of the cloud storage and sync. And that's prevent from sleep. And it tells you exactly what it does. While charging the device, this setting prevents it from going to sleep and that makes synchronizing easier. So that's cloud storage and sync. And then you have local storage. This is more informational than anything else, but it tells tells you how many locally stored copies you have, but then it also shows you the cached files. And the cached files includes those smart previews, those lower resolution raw files. And then finally it tells you how many free gigabytes of space you have. And if you want to clear your cache because you need to free some space up, you can. You just tap that clear cache button and it tells you, you can see this will not impact locally stored albums. So any album that you turned on this locally stored option, they will stay on the iPad, even if you choose to clear the cache. Now, another thing I have to address, because this is a question that I keep getting over and over again, and that is people asking me how they can remove the file from the cloud because they don't want to use up their cloud storage space. They want the photo on the iPad, as an example, and they want it on Lightroom on the desktop, but they don't want it in the Adobe cloud. And here's the thing, you can't do that, you can't separate them. Once you synchronize it, it is synchronized across those locations. And if you delete it in one place, you delete it in all places. Now, the last thing I wanted to talk about is just some of the other interface options and tools that we have here in Lightroom CC on the iPad. So the first is changing the thumbnail size. You can see right now that my thumbnails are pretty small and maybe you want your thumbnails larger. Making them larger is actually very easy. All you have to do is take your fingers and pinch to increase the thumbnail size. Now, now it doesn't give you as many options as changing the thumbnails in say Lightroom Classic, but it's still nice to be able to go super small or really big like this. Also, when you're looking at the grid mode like this, you can change the amount of information that you see on photos. For instance, right now you should notice that 
I have the ratings showing on my photos. But there's other information that you can see overlaid on your thumbnails, and you can cycle through that information by two finger tapping on the screen. So if I tap, it switches to no info at all. If I tap again, now it shows my EXIF info. And if I tap again, it hides all the overlays. If I tap again, it shows the file type, shows the flags and ratings, and it just cycles through all of the different information. And finally, the last thing is how to apply and use the tags and ratings. In order to start tagging or rating or looking at file information, you actually have to go into an individual file. So I'm just going to tap into this file here. And you'll see down here on the lower right, you have these four options, these little icons. The first is the star, and this is where you can apply ratings. And you'll notice here there are stars and flags along the bottom. And you can change ratings down here at the bottom. If you tap a star rating or you tap a flag, it will set that option. You can also slide across the stars. But another really nice thing is interacting with the photo itself. If I slide my finger up on the right side of the screen, it changes the flag rating. I can move my finger up and down and change the flag rating. And if I do the same thing on the left side of the screen, I can change the star rating. So if you want to go through and rate your images, you can very quickly and easily do that by flipping through an image and deciding you want to flag this. Flip through again, I want to flag this. So this is a, a really nice way to be able to very quickly go through and rate and start to call your images. Then we have comments. Comments are only useful when you're sharing photos in a web gallery. And then we have tags, which is keyword tagging your photos. And then this is searchable. So let's say here, I want to put despair, which is actually the name of the character that Cecilia is cosplaying in these photos. Now, if I go out to the main library, I'm going to go to all photos, I'm going to choose filter, and then I'm going to filter by keywords. And I can select a keyword in here, despair, and it shows up just like that. So now let's go back into there, and the last tab is the information, which literally shows you the information, but you can edit some of this. You can add a title to the image if you want. This is metadata for your image. You can change the caption. You can change the copyright info if you don't have any in there. You can also change the ratings and the flags right here, and then it does show you some of your metadata information, your file name, the date and time, your camera and other information, and your camera settings. So that's how you organize your photos in Lightroom. And we're actually going to talk about the editing workflow in the next video. So if you have questions about editing raw files in Lightroom, let me know down in the comments. And then do me a favor, would you like this video and hit that bell icon so you don't miss any of my videos. And then get out there and take some damn photos. And you can see that I have available 935 gigabytes of my one terabyte. 